Hi, I'm Sherry Johnson, Watauga County Arts Council in Blue Ridge Art Space. You know, you've gotten used to seeing me coming every week, or I hope you have, uh, coming in every week and telling you all about the amazing artists that surround us in this community and how many wonderful artists we have. Uh, and I try to showcase those artists, bring them and introduce you to them, uh, get you to see a little bit of what they do and get you excited about what they do. And a big role of the Arts Council is enabling and helping artists to do whatever they do even better. Uh, and that could be done in a variety of ways, but also a big role of the Arts Council is getting you involved in the arts in a bunch of ways. Uh, getting you to sample the arts, getting you to appreciate the arts, to participate in the arts. Um, and then we have, to make all those wonderful things happen, we have a great board of directors, we have an advisory council, we have volunteers, we have just lots and lots of folks that surround the Arts Council and make it part of what it is. But there needs to be somebody kind of in the head and, and leading this whole thing and making sure that it's all heading in the same general direction and trying to facilitate people as they try to do what they do, making that happen a little bit better. And for 28 years, that has been me. Um, I was the executive director uh, from 1992, July, uh, August the 1st of, of 1992, up until now, this August the 1st, 2020. I cannot believe how fast those years have flown by, but uh, I am now uh, finishing up exactly 28 years to today. Um, and so I have been amazed as I've been going up, preparing for retirement. I've been a, do, doing a whole lot of reviewing things, getting things ready for people to take over the helm with different projects and so forth and organizing and trying to get things put together. And in that process, going over a lot of files, a lot of pictures, a lot of whatever, you know, and I'll be honest, uh, it has blown my mind what all has happened in the last 28 years. How many different programs, how many different audiences of pictures I've seen, how many kids growing up right in front of my eyes in pictures, uh, mm -hmm. how many of our community have been involved in various ways, how many different artists we've brought in and also nurtured from within our community. Just so many cool things happen. We've been located in various locations around the county, uh, we, but we have programs all through this county. And I mean, every nook and cranny of the county. And so it's a really exciting job. It's a lot of fun in a lot of ways. And I'm ready though now to move on to things that are a little bit uh, less intense. Uh, doing some things that are different uh, with my husband and I, are, I've got some plans. And so we want to get out and travel a bit and do some things differently and spend some time with some grandchildren and do things like that. And um, so it's time to hand the reins over. And I'm going to hand them over to a very special young woman that we've discovered. Her name is Amber Bateman. Amber is here to meet us tonight. And yeah. I want you to get to know Amber really, really, really well because uh, she's gonna be doing what I do only in her way and maybe even better. Uh, so now Amber, you are local. You were brought up here in Watauga County, born here. Yep, I was born and raised here. I was actually born uh, in my house off of Castle Ford Road, off of 194, and um, was raised here. When I was 17, I was like, I left, and I was like, I'm never coming back, and then sure enough, I, here I am. So I've cycled back. <laughs> We've been back since 2010, my husband and I have, and uh, we have three girls, so. Okay, now yeah. your husband's name is Charlie? Uh, yeah, Charlie Bateman. Mm -hmm. Charlie. And we had to go look up Charlie's title because it's so long, neither of us could remember it. So would you please quote Charlie's title for us so we know what he does? Uh, the short version of it is he is a small business counselor for the Small Business and Technology Development Center uh, via App State. So, ah, yeah. and then okay. he does some side projects and stuff like that. So he's always cool. got his hands in something. He's very busy. <laughs> <laughs> Energetic man. <Very. laughs> Seems to do a whole lot of pacing while Amber and I are zooming. <laughs> so I think all of our husbands are floating around in our pictures. Uh, now, Amber, you have the, the three girls. How old are they? What are their names? Uh, so Sophia is my 15-year-old. She is about to get her braces off and is about to start uh, driver's ed. Unfortunately, COVID has slowed that down. She's not mm. too happy about it. I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> I'm hearing about it. So COVID, hurry up and get over um, and then Julia is 13, a fresh 13. So she uh, was a gymnast for, she's still a gymnast, but she's been taking a break with COVID. Mm -hmm. And um, she just started cheer team for Otago County Schools and um, is very motivated and driven. A really cool kid. That's great. Um, and then Isabel is my forever curious child. She's a little scientist at heart and she is 10 and um, just 
really super fun, quirky kid. She loves, you know, different flavors and loves foods and she's, she's just a that's funky great. Yeah. Now, Mike Wise would say that that's a, just a perfect age for a, a cadre of volunteers to be. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they've been volunteering for a long time. They didn't have a choice. So I've been, they've been in tow with me through all the community projects that I've been working on in the community since the beginning. Well, they know let's the talk about those projects now. You, uh, well, obviously you took out time to have babies and raise babies and do all those things. And if you're like me, and I know you are, then you multitask. You, yeah. you know, you kept up with a lot of different things. What is your history after you left high school and moved on? What did you do with your life? What all have you been doing? Um, well, I did a little bit of everything. I traveled, I worked for the, well, so actually one of the fun things about me getting this job is it kind of came full circle. So I, um, and when I was 17, I applied for a grant through the Watauga County Arts Council. Mm -hmm. And I got a grant to go do a clay carving class at Penland uh, School of Crafts down in Spruce Pine. And uh, that was a fabulous experience. So um, it was, it's kind of stuck with me. And I, the, the Arts Council has always just sort of been a special place in my heart ever since then. So um, I did that. I traveled. I went to, I lived in Hawaii for a little bit. I lived in Raleigh. I worked for the governor's office in the Department mm -hmm. of Transportation as a photographer's assistant. Um, went to school and then my husband and I moved, when we got married, we moved to, um, uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania and we lived there mm -hmm. for five years. That's where we had Julia and Sophia. And then we moved, uh, to Raleigh quickly and then back to, uh, Boone in 2000 and we got to back to Boone in 2010. So, so you brought him home with you. Yeah. That's well, we met here in Boone. <laughs> he was going to ASU. So we okay. actually met here in Boone. Uh, when I was back and going back to school as well. So yeah, oh, that works. He, has, that works. He, has, he loves Boone. Um, okay. And really, yeah. yeah, so it wasn't too big of a pull for me to have to bring it back. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Boone does have a way of, of pulling you back in. You know, it when does. You, I, I call it that the boomerang effect. The boomerang. Right. Yeah. My boomerang was a little bit longer. I was born here and lived in and out of Boone when I was growing up because my parents were school teachers and taught all over the place. Mm -hmm. But uh, we eventually settled in Winget, and then my husband was also born here and ended up settling in Winget as well. Oh. And so we met down there and married and came back here. And my grandfather, who was from this area and was a coon dog hunter, you know what I'm saying? That he mm -hmm. did all that. And he was so proud of me for finding a mountain boy off the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That is funny. He found a mountain boy off the mountain. I did. I did. And so, so, uh, so I know that pull that Boone has, it did on both of us, you know, mm -hmm. to come back here. So I understand where that's coming from. Now, once you came back to Boone, you got involved in the community here pretty quickly. Not that it would be, it'd be hard not to, I guess. But yeah. tell me what you've done in the years that you've been working with this community. Um, we came back in January. So that following fall was when Sophia started kindergarten. Mm -hmm. And her first day of school, I was driving her to school and we were driving through King Street. And that was when Hospitality House was over mm -hmm. downtown. Yeah. And there was a mom with two kids out on the corner. Uh, one of them was in jammies. She was still in her jammies and the little kid was ready for school. She looked like a kindergartner, my, my same kid's age. And, um, it like totally popped my comfortable, you know, my comfortable bubble. I was like, oh my God, you know, we're in a town with a church and a nonprofit on every corner. Like surely things are in place to not allow a family to be homeless. Mm -hmm. And so that just sort of sparked in me this uh, energy to want to know how to help. And so from there, I went and talked with the, I set a note down for the school, um, social worker Denise Kresnell and was like, if she ever needs anything again, if any other kids need help, please let me know. Meanwhile, we were all, like, we had gone through, you know, it was the recession. So we were not, you know, great financially. We had moved back so that we could get back on our feet. And, um, and so I didn't have a lot of money, but she contacted me and asked me to get pants and shoes for uh, three little girls. And I had three little girls. And so that again, sparked that thing mm -hmm. in me to connect with that human need. And, um, and it was just a really powerful experience. I didn't want to tell anybody about it. I kind of, I remembered there's a scripture that says, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. And, and so I just wanted it to kind of, it, cause it says there's, um, what is it? It's like something about being rewarded or whatever by your maker. And you don't need that here on earth. Something about that. And I was just like, okay, I'm going to just try that. And I was going through a hard time personally and having done that 
it just transformed my perspective. And mm -hmm. I just thought it started this whole path with me and Denise Presnell to find out more about the needs and figure out. And I, as I listened to her, I thought if people knew they would help, but people don't know. And so right. they don't know that this kid needs live shampoo. They don't know that teachers are pulling out of their pockets to pay for school trips. They don't know, you know, but if they knew they would help. And so I started a Facebook group and um, we called it Quiet Givers because it was all about giving anonymously for the sake right. of giving rather than for notoriety or for, you know, any sort of accolades here between our, ourselves. And um, it grew and it was a beautiful project. It grew mm -hmm. from just, you know, school, that school social worker to all the school social workers and then um, other community organizations referring needs um, because we were so, we were able to be so quick. Our networking, we had, we, didn't, we cut through all the red tape. And what was beautiful is it was stuff that if people, you know, didn't have the money, but they had a heater in there, you know, maybe the need was for a heater or if they didn't right. have one thing, then they could give to the needs that spoke to them. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so it was really awesome. And, and then that grew. And from there, we, we realized there was a need for back to school needs for kids every year that were showing up at school with nothing in hand. Right. And, um, and we thought every kid deserves to start school feeling confident and prepared. You know, it's, it makes such a difference for their social and mental and emotional well-being to be able to go to school knowing they have everything they need. And so we started the back to school festival. And it was such a fun project because we were able to collaborate. Um, we were able to pull in all these other agencies that work with families in the community and work on one project. And then we, I networked out with all the church, you know, as many churches as I could get to pull in to come and help us with this. So all these micro projects for back to school stuff were able to pull in and be more impactful in this one event um, that really able to serve the need in a greater way. So yeah. be fine. You also have gotten involved in another nonprofit in town. You want to talk yeah. about that one in a minute? A bit um, of a change of pace. <laughs> my husband brought me in on that one. So uh, my husband Charles worked with um, Hiking Through Beer Fest for quite a few years as a, he did their promotions and marketing and just helped out wherever oh. needed. And it was a really fun experience. And um, he got a job that was really taxing on him and he wasn't able to do it anymore. So I kind of stepped in his place and took over to marketing and promotions for the event about four years ago, maybe. I don't know. It's, it's a blur. Um, and so then from there, I just kind of served as a volunteer. And then uh, Brett Taubman, he's been running it for 12 years or 11 years. And all the board members had been, do, you know, bootstrapping this thing, you know, and, and grassroots in this thing for that long and been working it every year. And they were all starting to get tired and ready to phase out. And so, um, I stepped in as an interim director, basically. I said, I'm not going to do this forever, but <laughs> so I've been helping for the last, this is my second year um, okay. helping to direct uh, Hiking Through Beer Fest. So right. it's different this year, but it'll be, it'll still be fun. We're going to do a virtual fest and, um, and then have some really cool uh, raffle drawings uh, for, we've got the red bike from um, New Belgium and Mm -hmm. um, really rare beers and, and that sort of thing. So hopefully we'll still be able to raise money for fermentation sciences. Now, uh, you've also got some commercial experience because I think your dad owns a company that you're working with. Is that right? Oh yeah. High country, uh, high country 365. So, uh, -huh. uh yeah, my dad, Ben Cox has owned and operated that for God, I don't even know how long, <laughs> but he's been, he's been the owner of that for a really long time. So I've helped him on and off since we moved mm -hmm. back. Just with various projects. I helped him with the Home Sweet Home Show out in Ash County every year. That's right. just happened to be my thing. And um, I've helped him with various things. So um, more recently, I helped him to craft a fundraising program for local schools because he was mm -hmm. wanting to try to find ways to give back. And so we used his uh, buy one, get one free dining pass, the high country dining pass. Right. Uh, gives buy one, get one free meals to local restaurants and basically created a fundraising program out of that, which has raised over $40,000 for local schools in just two years. That's so great. Uh -huh. yeah, it's been pretty impactful. The kids all get out there and sell them to friends and family and the friends and family get to go to local restaurants, which, which helps our economy, but then they also get to save money when they eat out. Uh -huh. And the school makes a really, a really generous portion of that money. That's so, cool. That's yeah, cool. it's been, that was, that's been a really fun project. So. Now, we haven't really talked much about your arts background. Uh, you won a scholarship from the Arts Council when mm -hmm. you were 17, and you went to Penland, mm -hmm. and you studied, what was it, clay? 
uh, clay carving. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, is that your, your artistic love or are you a dabbler? I, I'm a dabbler. I don't really, <laughs> I, I, um, I always had grand ideas of, you know, doing more with my art, but it just, life just kind of happened quick mm -hmm. and kept happening. And, um, my creative energy really went to building community. So right. I really, a lot of the creative energy that I would be putting into, you know, sculpting or painting and trying to bring, you know, get a professional career out of that. I really kind of turned to, um, collaborating and creating community projects that can serve the area. So I, all the, on the side of all of the busyness of that, I always dabbled. So clay was my thing for a while. I really love clay. I love sculpting and, um, I love throwing on the wheel. I don't get on that as much as I prefer. <laughs> um, but more recently, I think out of a necessity for something quick and easy and just kind of light, I've been really enjoying painting and I've been dabbling. I just, I, I like painting with um, inks actually. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I don't know if it's really a thing, but yeah. I just, That's cool. I like it. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I've now, uh, what made you decide you wanted to uh, take this particular position? It's, um, it, it's, it's, as you have learned recently, it is a pretty involved position. So what yeah. made you want to do that? And are you surprised at how involved it is? I um, I have been watching the the arts council for a while, and I I'm one of those get in and get busy kind of people. So I've I've really had to hold myself back from wanting to like volunteer for the board or volunteer as a volunteer because I knew that it would become a passion for me. Um, so and and I would and I would want to give it my all, and I knew I was too busy with other things and commitments to be able to do that um, at those times in my life. So. Um, I just, I have a really, I love the commu our community and mm -hmm. I love the arts and I can't think of a better way to be able to merge those two loves than to be able to work inside Watauga County with, in, within the high country to be able to, you know, um, collaborate and bring unity between different agencies and different art groups and, and to be able to see that sort of a cohesiveness um, brought to helping Mm -hmm. um, the arts become a more prominent position in our community. I would really, I, I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to serving the artists, learning their needs, and then figuring out how we can really help them to be able to showcase their talent, right. their talent out, and, and be able to show that, um, you know, to, to, the, to the world. We are indeed an arts rich community. And matter of fact, we are known as an arts rich community. Yeah. I, I definitely will, uh, will concur to the fact that try as hard as, I've, as I have over the years, there's still so many people that just don't yet figure out what the Arts Council does in this community right. and how they can connect. And so I'm hoping that your background in all of those things related to marketing and getting the word out and so forth will help you to find a way to, come, to break through that that I haven't been able to find, you know. Now, I, I asked a minute ago, and I, I think you didn't go there on the subject. Uh, how is the, you've had about a month to get acquainted with folks and get acquainted with the job and spend some time. What's your take on the Arts Council position now, now that you've gotten, and don't, don't run. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's been good. I like it. I, it's more rich in uh -huh. spirit and community than what I even expected. And I knew that there would be that, but I really enjoyed understanding the history and the people that have been with it for as long as they have mm -hmm. and, and how they've built, you know, and how they've stuck with it and been steadfast with the, with that organization. And I, I, you know, I really, have, I've enjoyed, I've enjoyed that a lot. I think that brings a depth to it that was somewhat unexpected. I wasn't, it wasn't that I didn't think it was there. I just didn't really quite grasp it until I got in and started, you know, being able to feel it and, and being able to see the community that has been built. And so it really makes me excited that there's such a strong foundation already there that now I'm really interested in pulling in more people and, you know, bringing being able to connect um, to people that maybe haven't been connected in a while and, you know, and, and trying to interweave them, not to leave one out or the other, but really to try to start to bring a nice unity between, you know, That's all, right. the, all the different. Groups. Now you're right on the edge of a new decade for the Arts Council. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the Arts Council was formed on literally on February the 4th of 1981. Right. So coming up this February, the Arts Council will be 40 years old. So your timing is really good here because you've got time to kind of get your feet on the ground before you start trying to celebrate something. But, you know, it kind of is, a, is an exciting time. 
Yeah. Um, what do you see happening in the next decade of the Arts Council? What are your visions? I know you don't know everything yet. I didn't either. New things are, are always emerging. Right. But what what dreams have you started to put together in your mind? Um, gosh, that's a good question because I feel like I've been dreaming for like four years. <laughs> but now <laughs> you're gonna ask me, and I'm gonna have to put it all in words. Um, gosh, you know, I think that you know, making arts a destination for the high country, mm -hmm. really starting to see it. It was fun for me today to talk about where the arts were, where you guys had a hand in it, you know, where the Arts Council had a hand in it. With the, I remember the benches being built around the trees on Jones House Lawn. I remember, you know, when the, the benches went up on the further end of town and some of the sculptures that have gone up. And um, I want to build on that. I don't, you know, I, I want to continue to see more sculptures in the community maybe right. from the greenway commissioners let me do that um, i want to be able to see more collaborative projects with you know between artists hopefully mm -hmm. some murals you know going up um just i, I really want to bring sort of just a, ho a cohesiveness to it and, and hope to you know strengthen um the classes that we've been doing i love all the class mm -hmm. you know the classes and the workshops that we've already done and so you know, pulling in new instructors and more instructors and being able to figure out how to serve our instructors and our, our educators, um, you know, figuring out how to serve the arts within the schools and, and, mm -hmm. and work with Watauga County Schools to be able to do that. It's I'm really excited about that and working with students and yeah, I don't know. I'm rambling. <laughs> I didn't realize that. What do you think? Well, it's, it's that kind of a job. And, and I found that the more I brainstorm out loud with other people, the more we feed off each other. Yeah. And their idea sparks my idea. And then I, I say something that sparks them and then it just keeps growing that way. You know? Yeah. So I think yeah. interaction is a really big part of the job. You know, you yeah. can't, this is not a solo position. And no. You can't look her down at your desk and do it. You know, no. you've got to get out and do a lot of different things in the community. What do you feel like is probably the biggest key to making all those dreams happen? Do you think it's maybe fundraising or maybe is it bringing in more volunteers or maybe is it more a different facility for the arts council or what are the things that you think are, are most critical? Um, that's a really good question. I think tapping into our community. Um, really, I'm, I'm working right now on doing an artist survey and then that's kind of morphed into, well, I wanna know what these people think and I wanna know what these people think. So you guys are gonna get bombarded with some surveys because I really wanna know who's out there, how we can serve them, what their thoughts are, and really learn from asking questions. That's how I started Kite Givers. That's how I started the back to school, you know, I started the back to school festival, was from asking questions and listening. And then you can start to build from there. And so um, I see that happening first. It's just really, I really wanna dig in and get to know the people that are already in the art scenes and already mm -hmm. driving it and figure out how we can support that and then how we can add to that. Um, I want to tap into untapped, you know, strengths in people. I really love that. I'm a really big, like the body is working because each part is doing its part. And that's how I think we've been able to be so successful with the Back to School Festival and with Quiet Givers because we're not trying to force everything into what our mold is. We're, what we're doing is we're saying, how are you strong? How do you work? And then how can that fit within this, you know, mold? And so for me, that's what, my first year is going to be, you know, it, it's, it's, for me, it's going to actually, it's going to be a forever process of learning that, you know, learning people and then learning how we can use their strength to be able to feed into a stronger goal. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think I love that in a, in a year where there's so much divisiveness and there's so much political polarization mm -hmm. that, you know, one thing I loved about the back to school festival is that we could all come together, everybody from all different backgrounds and beliefs and, ideologies could come together under the fact that kids deserve to start school feeling mm -hmm. confident and prepared. And so I feel like there's that same uh, bond with the arts is that it doesn't matter where you come from or where your what your ideology is or you know what your political party is. I think we can all come together under the fact that the arts enrich us and enrich the community and and are a powerful mm -hmm. um, self-expression and need to be seen and need to be felt and heard. And so, you know, I'm hoping that, that we can help just enhance that. Um, and then I, yeah, I, I think we're gonna grow out of Blue Ridge Art Space. <laughs> so future plans. Oh, I definitely, um, I can tell you from experience, we'd already maxed out a few times already. Yeah, yeah. So 
So yeah. it'll be interesting. I think Blue Ridge Art Space, we're going to, you know, COVID's changing everything. So mm -hmm. we may rethink that space. We may reuse it. I would really love to see pop-up galleries, pop-up, um, you know, events happening. I would love to see some more art shows mm -hmm. out in the community, mm -hmm. regular ones that people can count yeah. on. Um, I really want to be able to provide spaces for artists to be able to show, local mm -hmm. artists specifically, to be able to showcase their talent. Right. And, you know, being with my events background and stuff, I feel like um, if I partner with the right people and I get the right people on board, then we can make some of those things happen sooner rather than later. Um, yeah, but. Well, COVID is, is, uh, has been a bit of a blessing for you in that I stopped working in the office on March the 18th. Yeah. And so, and we had a very busy life and, and things going on and lots of activities and lots of programs, but all that kind of came to a screeching halt. And we've done a whole different way of doing things over the COVID shutdown period. And now we're talking about a soft reopening that you're going to lead through. Uh, and eventually, COVID notwithstanding, at some point in that time, you will get back up to full steam again. And I think the beauty of that is that it gives you a chance to, number one, take it a little bit slower getting into things than you would have to been if you jumped right in head first. And number two, I think it's going to give the community a chance to get to know you and to work with you in different ways from what they did with me. And I think that's a big plus. It's a big advantage. Yeah. So, uh, so I think it's an opportunity that we, we uh, need to capitalize on and, and, look at it as a positive and move on, you know, so. Yeah, yeah, I'm hoping to be able to seize the opportunity to, you know, do some volunteer outreach, try to get some fresh blood, you know, coming in and helping to support the ones that have been right. doing this for so long. Um, Cause I, you know, just fresh energy and helping to just come alongside, not to replace, mm -hmm. but to come alongside and help out. And, you know, I know there are a lot of talented people out there that, you know, if they knew they would help. So if we let that, you know, the needs mm -hmm. be known and, you know, we're, we're going to need financial support. We're going to need, uh, we do need financial support, uh, especially with COVID and no workshops being right. happening. And, well, we've you know, really, classes. yeah, we've been nearly on a whole full size shutdown, but the art stream has been really the biggest thing we've been doing during this time. Yeah. So our money has definitely been impacted by it. And there's just no two ways around that. You know? Yeah. So we're definitely going to have to hit the ground running with some fundraising efforts. But mm -hmm. I think one of the things that I love so much, and I think one of the things that really sparked my interest for wanting to direct the, the Arts Council was the, the beauty behind being able to combine the arts with the fundraising events, you know, mm -hmm. wanting, you know, just the imagination going wild with just how many ways we can engage artists and showcase talent while also trying to raise money right. and, and benefit, mm -hmm. you know, try to sustain the organization you know, that's, that's being able to support it. So. Well, I'm excited about your future with the Arts Council, and I'm excited about the Arts Council's future with you. And I, uh, I feel the energy coming from you, and I think that's a real positive, and I think the community is going to welcome that, and I think you're going to have a very successful time with the Arts Council, and, and I'm grateful that you're here and wishing you a, a very, you know, a very good experience with the arts. And, uh, and also, I will be, from a distance, uh, <laughs> watching and keeping up with what's going on because it matters to me. I love this organization and I love this community. And so, uh, so I'll stay involved, you know, but I won't be in town a whole lot. So I'll just be available if you need me, but, but not out, not, not with my, I'm not going to be looking over your shoulder. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I would be like, I know I'm doing this wrong. <laughs> um, no, no, you've got I, to do it your way. So yeah. Yeah. I do want to just say thank you. you know, thank you for putting in those 28 years, for sustaining it through the highs and lows, and you know, for building such strong community with with uh, with the board and with all these members that are just still here, still volunteering, and um, you know, you're you're giving me something. So I appreciate that. You know, well, I'm not going to build this from scratch. It's come a very long way in the 28 years. I will admit that, but uh, but I think it's time for new and exciting directions. When they got ready to hire someone, I told them I wanted them to find someone that was younger. And that would do what I did with the organization, which was, and I didn't do this immediately. I didn't come stampeding in, you know, right. but over, a, you know, over time, the organization and I moved in directions that I guarantee you, the people that hired me never thought we would ever dream of going. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. New ideas, new directions. And, and I look forward to seeing what you're going to do in the same way. So Thanks. I hope I don't let people down. <laughs> <laughs> you I, I kind of, I tell people, I'm like, I take this job on with like, 
extreme excitement and then also like incredible terror and fear. <laughs> like, You'll get used to it. Yeah. <laughs> And also, folks, you can keep up with Amber and the Works of the Arts Council and all the really cool things that they'll be doing uh, through the website, which is watauga-arts.org. You can also go to Facebook. Uh, the Arts Council has a Facebook page. It's actually called Blue Ridge Art Space slash Watauga County Arts Council. There's also an Instagram page. And then when the time is right, when things finally do come back to it, come and get involved. The best way of all is to come to the facility and actually be there elbow to elbow, close to other people, and that will be socially correct at some point in history. Uh, but, but you'll be able to, to feel like you're part of the energy and part of the group and, and be a participant. And so the, we're on the corner of Chatelaine and State Farm Roads. And as I've said for a long time, it's that building with the little blue people on the front porch. Thanks for joining us.